That print is made with Nova 3D water washable tough resin. That's right, water washable tough resin. And it seems to be handling this impact really well. In this video I'm going to test this resin with my standard hammer drop test, the hammer strike test, the vice test, and also a couple of new tests like the nail gun test, the dovetail test, and the thin wall test. So stick around for those. Now let's go back to the hammer drop tests. When I started resin printing a couple of years ago, my understanding was that tough resins needed IPA washing. And since I wanted to design functional parts that needed to be durable, I decided I'd have to make the switch to IPA. And that really is the main reason why I switched from water washing to IPA washing. In fact, I made a video about it last year. But times change and resins have been rapidly developing over the last couple of years. So when Nova 3D saw all the resins I'd been testing, they reached out and asked if I'd be willing to try their water washable tough resin. So a disclosure, Nova 3D did send me this resin for free, but they didn't ask to see this video before it was published. So all these tests and opinions are my own. Oh, and by the way, the label says clear, uh, but it's actually gray, which is why I've had to put my own label up here. Yeah. Look, I had my doubts. Surely a water washable resin meant some sort of trade-off. But as you can see from these hammer drop tests, this resin is performing very well. This is water washable resin. I didn't think this was possible. I'm just dropping this one and a half kilo hammer onto the part with its own weight. The part has a wall thickness of three millimeters and I designed it to replace the original dust extraction fitting in this Festool track saw. So it needs to be durable and capable of withstanding knocks in the workshop while I'm working with the saw. And you can see that with successive hammer drops, this print still resists the impacts really well. That just looks really good. Okay, so we've got some scuff marks. Uh, and that's to be expected, I suppose. But uh, this resin is holding up very well. Well, what can I say, Nova 3D? Well done. That's excellent. It really is excellent. Wouldn't it be great if this was available in a range of colours? Like really nice colours. When doing this test, I do about 10 hammer drops and then switch over to the hammer strike. Now that's where I just add a little bit more force to see how likely it is to break. So now we're up for the hammer strike test. The hammer strike test. Here we go. All right, so that was number one and that was fairly gentle. That was number two and that was a little bit harder. Keep in mind that this thing has already been belted a number of times. Now look, it's not very scientific and I'm not measuring things like Newton meters of force or anything like that but this does give me a good working idea of how usable this resin might be in service. Wow, this is a water washable tough resin. Have I said that already? <laughs> Incredible. Wow, things are gonna change again. So it's not smash proof, it's not indestructible, but that's okay because um, I don't think it's meant to be. I think it's just meant to be impact resistant. And uh, I think if it can be this good under this much pressure for this particular application, well, I, I think it's amazing. Yeah, I totally endorse it. <laughs> it's incredible. So thank you, Nova 3D. One of the, uh, one of the only problems with this resin is that um, I've used most of it up in my testing, uh, which means I don't really have much left. Might have to buy some. <laughs> and now for the vice test. I am expecting this to break, of course, but I'm curious to see how. Some resins bend all the way without cracking until they are totally compressed. Others can shatter apart much earlier. With this Nova 3D resin, it does crack and break as expected. But I'd say that there's quite a bit of good flexibility here before failure. I reckon that's a satisfactory result for the vice test. It's not too soft and it's not too brittle. So what about accuracy and print quality? Well, for this part that I'm testing, I'd have to say that the print quality is excellent. The detail is beautifully rendered, and I really like the deep grey colour. As far as I can tell, this is up there with the other high quality tough resins like the Amerilabs TGM7, which I've also tested. And remember, the detail that I'm looking for is smooth, clean surfaces and sharp lines and corners. And to test accuracy, I've added what I'm calling the dovetail test. This allows me to test for those sharp edges with well-defined corners. But why would I want to 3D print wood joints and then stick them onto timber? Well, that's kind of weird. Well, that's for another project I'm working on, which I'll talk about in another video. However, this does give me the chance to test how well this resin takes glue and whether it will bond to another material. Because if you're printing for functional parts, 
then it's, well, it's likely that you're going to be using another material somewhere in your project. Well, maybe. In this first dovetail test, I designed the part so that I could also screw the print into the timber. But the glue seemed to hold so well that I actually I wondered whether that was necessary. So I glued another joint to the face of the timber to test how strong that bond would be. The bond is okay, but for a corner joint and glued onto end grain, it probably won't be so great. And you can see here that it works, but it could be stronger, especially for a corner joint. So I put the screws back in, and note that this is after the glue had dried. Now you would typically put the screws in as the glue is drying, but hey, this is experimental. So yeah. The next step was to glue the joint and then let it dry overnight and give it a sand and then stress test it. Now sanding is something you would normally do to a dovetailed woodworking project to help even out all those tiny little edges. But you don't want to rely on sanding to fix the job because then you start to lose that nice squareness that the dovetails offer. In this example you can't really see the shape of the dovetails because both sides are grey with no contrast, like end grain contrasts with the face of timber but you could achieve that with different coloured resins. And here it is. I reckon that looks pretty good actually. So we've left it overnight and the joint is glued up nicely. I think that's turned out really well actually. It's square. Well, square enough, I would say. That looks pretty good. Now let's just see whether the resin holds up to a bit of pressure. Oh, okay, here we go. Now, how is this actually breaking? Is it the resin? It's just the glue. Okay. All right, okay. So what we can see from that is that the resin hasn't cracked at all. And in fact, it was just the glue that was coming apart from the resin. So you can see here that wood glue doesn't stick to this resin particularly well. And look, that's not surprising. It's wood glue, it's not resin glue. So maybe an epoxy would have been better. But then again, if you're gonna to go to an epoxy, you probably wouldn't be making a project like this. Maybe, I don't know. Well, I wouldn't, <laughs> but I think that looks pretty good. But you know what? I'm not really that satisfied. Can I actually break it? Let's try that. So here we have the dovetail pins screwed into a piece of timber and it's also glued. And uh, I've got this in the machine vise here. So you can see just there, just there that the pins are clamped between these two jaws. There's a little gap there, so you can see they are actually being clamped. Now, let's see how much pressure this can take. How am I gonna break this? What if I just... Okay, so now we've got a breakage just through here. You see that just there? So now we're actually starting to see the resin break. But still, for this particular application, I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And the other thing is, it doesn't shatter. It just kind of slowly bends and then fails. Seems kind of a shame to um, have messed that up. It was a good demo, anyway. <laughs> you can always print up another one. But what if you don't want to do complex joints and you just want to nail it? Well, let's see how it handles a nail gun. Well, not that great, actually. <laughs> what about a simple nail? Okay, this one is a heavier gauge, and I'm hitting it quite hard. You can see that the resin takes quite a pounding, uh, but then ultimately breaks. So it can't really be nailed. The last test I want to do is to test how this resin works for thin-walled projects. The previous one had a wall thickness of 3mm, uh, this one is 1mm. This is a water-powered rocket, which I have made and flown before with some success, but I was using a hand pump to create the pressure needed to blow the cork out of the rocket. This time, I'm going to test for toughness, as in, will the fins of the rocket break off? And I'm going to do a kind of pressure test. Instead of just using a push fit with the cork, I'm also going to add a tiny amount of silicone. 
Uh, the aim here is to see how much pressure I can build up before the cork blows out or the rocket bursts apart. Now I found that by leaving the silicon to dry overnight with water inside the rocket, it actually caused the resin to swell and bend the shape of the main body. I was not expecting this, and it made for a rather strange looking rocket. That said, it still flies, just not very well. Kind of an epic fail, really. But if you're looking for a resin that works with thin walled parts, then check this out. Remember that these walls are only one millimeter thick. The top section of the rocket, which was in contact with the water overnight, has become super flexible. It really does resist quite a lot of bending and handling before it finally splits. The lower section is also very flexible, but not immune to splitting. But then again, it does take quite some flexing before it actually splits. And check out how flexible these fins are. Now, they will break, of course, if you try hard enough, but if you're looking for a resin for intricate or delicate parts or miniatures, then this will probably work very well for you. So there you have it, water washable tough resin by Nova 3D. Now look, I'm not familiar with every resin on the market, and I'm sure there are other water washable resins out there with good toughness properties like this one. But this is the first water washable tough resin that I've tested, and I reckon it's really worth your consideration. I think it performed very well in all of my tests, and I'd certainly consider it for future projects. The fact that it's tough and water washable opens this resin up to many more people and applications. A couple of examples I can think of would be schools and maybe universities, particularly because you remove the IPA hazard. Working with water washable resins still has its risks, it's not like this is non-toxic or something like that. But taking IPA out of the equation is a big step forward. There's been a lot to get through in this video, so thanks for watching. There's a link in the description where you can find out more about this resin and how to buy it. If these tests have been helpful for deciding whether this could be a resin for you, then like, comment, and consider subscribing. Thanks again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.